Hi, I'm Dr. Larry Foster, and uh, I'm uh, going to be talking with you on Gospel Tangents. Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. One of the things I really like about Dr. Foster is he takes issue with both critics and apologists with regards to Joseph Smith. In our final conversation with Dr. Foster, we're going to talk and find out more about what he thinks that both critics and apologists should understand about this complex man, the Prophet Joseph Smith. Check out our conversation. Well, that's great. Well, so so, the, do you have any books? Is that a book you're working on, or can you no? It's going to be another article. Um, article. I um, yeah. I first raised the issue. I, I don't want to get into the proxy husband thing. Uh, anybody who wants to read about that can look at the section in my uh, first book, Religion and Sexuality. <clears throat> Find out. It's uh, under the title of. There are two, two parts that uh, relate to that. Uh, the first is irregularities and forgotten practices. And then lim liminality and communitas. Uh, pages 159 to 166, 166 to 169. And then the accompanying massively detailed notes at the back, which have a lot of new material that's also worth looking at. Yeah. And that's all going back to 1981. I still haven't sorted it out, <laughs> but I'm working on it. And I hope, I, I hope to get at least a few more articles out pointing in the direction that I think would make sense and drawing upon and correcting errors of uh, or uh, previous things that I've said. But um, I think it's really hard for people who have this sort of complete hero worship idea of a sort of pasteboard saint to really understand Joseph Smith. And it's really hard for people who think he was just a total scoundrel and, and crook and con man and confidence man or whatever it was to see him properly. I think that there's an element of both in him. Um, so I, my latest piece on is trying to reconcile the fact that so many people for so many years have either thought that he was a true prophet of God, could do no evil, or he was a terrible scoundrel and a con man. And I think that the fact that so many people have had those opposing viewpoints, I, I have to believe, I always believe that most people are trying to do the right thing or be honest, unless I see otherwise. And so I think there's something that's very special about Joseph Smith, and there's also some stuff about him that looks like he's manipulative and so forth. So I argue that he was genuinely committed to his religious beliefs and ideals, but that he was also willing to cut corners and even lie or make false statements in order to try to accomplish his goals. Now, I just spoke with Dan Vogel recently. Yeah, we're very much on the same page on so this. So you would, you would go with pious fraud? Is that a, No, I don't a, use that. I, I say sincere charlatan. That sincere was the term charlatan. that I developed. Okay. I think pious has, uh, and fraud both are, uh, <laughs> pious, it sounds like you're, you're not really true. And fraud is fraud. I mean, charlatan, yeah, trickster would be better, maybe, than charlatan. Um, but I think that I think that he really had a genuine religious vision and ideals. I also think that he was willing to manipulate other people as part of that in ways that from outsider's perspective, looked like he was a fraud. If you don't bring the two together, you can't understand the overall dynamic. He was a great man. He was a great man. He was also a flawed man. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, of course, recognized that the prophet is a prophet only when he's acting as such. But even when he was acting as such, sometimes he may have deviated. Uh, who knows? I, I just can't. I can't. 
You know, that's what you know, a number, uh, Josiah Quincy said, you know, I, 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 I can't, you know, I, I, he's amazing, this is an extraordinary character. I can't understand him. I, I'm not sure. I don't really understand what to make of him. Uh, and, of course, that's, Brody was the first person to really pick that, that powerful statement of no man knows my history and, mm -hmm. and to take it the direction she took it. But it was a little too sensational, I thought, maybe a little bit. But she wouldn't have, it wouldn't have stayed in print so long if she hadn't been a little bit sensational, I guess. <laughs> but she also is on to all sorts of minor things that uh, subsequent scholarship has borne out. Could, could I ask your opinion on Brody, Bushman, and Vogel? Do, do you have a... Oh my, I, no, I don't, want to, I don't want to get into that. I'll say they both, they all have major contributions, make major contributions. My main concern about Bushman is I don't think he handles polygamy right. <laughs> he he, 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 he de-emphasizes it, he smooths it out too much. Aside from that, I think he does a great job. Brody, you got to give her credit. She was the first one to really tackle this stuff, and she did an amazing job with what she had, and she had all sorts of hunches that were right on track. Dan Vogel has got some really great stuff. Uh, you know, honestly, I, I, I can't say that I would want to judge any of them, except that I think they've all made major contributions to the scholarship in this area. Mm -hmm. And will continue to make major, except of course Brody is. I was very disappointed that she died before I could get her opinion on my first book. Oh, <laughs> I was just dying to have her, what her reaction would be to my first book. Yeah. I met her a, a couple of years before I got my book out, and uh, Jan Ships introduced us, and she was somewhat dismissive of me. I was, I was, she told me I was, I was just another one of the many. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I would have loved to have seen if she thought I was on track. Well, interesting. All right. Well, well, Dr. Larry Foster, I really appreciate you spending so much time here on Gospel Tangents. Well, I hope I haven't said anything that was actionable. But uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I, 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 you know, it's just um, it's not for everybody. And you know, I think um, if people are happy with their own experiences in Mormonism and uh, have uh, are satisfied with uh, not really delving into some of this stuff, fine. I say just might as well stay with it and not get into this. But if you are delving into it, there's ways, there are ways to do it in ways that don't force you to make a complete break, but to understand it in a different context. And that's what I'm basically trying to do to help people who might be in that situation to do. Because um, I've had to deal with that in my own personal religious life as I deal with things that I thought about Jesus, for example, that I now don't think about Jesus and so oh. forth and so on, which I'm not going to get into here. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, you know, I mean, he was a, another great man, but he was also very, very, and um, I don't think he thought he was God. I think that's a later <laughs> idea. But, uh, you know, so I, I'm more interested in the historical Jesus than in the uh, Jesus of faith. But, um, so I'm also more interested in the historical Joseph Smith than in the Joseph Smith, uh, the official prophet, seer, and revelator for the believing Mormons, um, or the disbelieving non-Mormons. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like both of them to be a little more cautious in their judgments and not make sure, that, not think that they've got all the answers of the greatest biographer of uh, Isaac Newton. He said, you know, uh, I, I, usually I can say I'm, uh, I've met a number of great men. Usually I can say I'm, uh, I'm a quarter or one half as smart as they are. With, with Isaac Newton, he, there's just no, <laughs> no, no comparison. Uh, He's an outlier. And, and, you know, I think anybody who would, and, and he says, and, and if I were as smart as he was, I wouldn't want to write a biography of him. I'd want to do something else with my life. <laughs> and, you know, if, uh, so I, I think anybody who thinks that they're as smart as Joseph Smith uh, is probably deluded. And if anyone fully thinks they understand him, they probably don't. And I would leave open 
a lot of possibilities. So I wouldn't say that I, people should accept anything I say as being um, accurate necessarily. I mean, it's accurate as so far as I can be factually accurate. I've spent an awful lot of time with materials, but I, but it's how you deal with the materials and the contextualization that's that's lacking so much of in much of Mormon history. You get the facts of different biographies of different important people, but then what's the underlying thing that links it together as a real person behind the biography? Just not just as a loyal Latter Day Saint who is struggling with, uh, but is there something more mm -hmm. that is there? I don't know. I don't know. All right. Well, thanks again. I really appreciate it. Okay. Well, thank you. I'm, I hope it's um, of interest. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Dr. Larry Foster, and I hope you learned as much as I did. Larry's actually been somebody I've wanted to get on for years, and I'm really excited that he came out for the Mormon History Association meetings uh, in June so I could sit down and talk with him. Thanks, Larry. I really appreciate it a lot. I'd also encourage you to go out and buy his book, Religion and Sexuality. This is, as you know now, used, or at least it was, I don't know if it still is, as a textbook at BYU. So it's a fantastic book, and you should definitely check it out. In our next conversation, I'm excited to have Ann Wilde back on the show. Some of you may remember Ann, we talked to her a couple of years ago. And in our next conversation, we're going to talk about the first book that she and her late husband, Ogden Kraut, published, and it's titled Jesus Was Married. She tells what Joseph Fielding Smith's reaction was when she gave the book to him. We knew that Joseph Fielding Smith believed in this Joseph Jesus was married. So we decided he he gave the first copy to me and inscribed it, which was wonderful. That's what that is. Um, but then we took the next copy over to the church office building and we went up to Joseph Fielding Smith's office. He was president of the Quorum of the Twelve at the time. And at that time there was no security. You just walked in, took an elevator up to the floor where his office was, walked right into the secretary and said, we have a book we'd like to give to President President Smith, he was president of the Quorum of the Twelve, but he was still called president. Mm -hmm. And uh, would that be okay? And so she walked in because the door was open to his office and he was sitting at his desk. And uh, she said something to him and he motioned us to come in. So we went in and Ogden handed him a copy of the book and uh, he gave him a minute to take a look at it. And then Ogden said, well, what do you think of that? Oh, quote, absolutely, it could be no other way the account of his marriage is right there in the New Testament. If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, please support Gospel Tangents and become a subscriber. For just $5 a month, go to uh, patreon.com slash gospel tangents and you can hear the entire interview. And you can also get uh, transcripts available at either our Amazon website or if you want to give the money to me and not Amazon, please subscribe on my website at gospeltangents.com and you can click the yellow subscribe button. Of course, we're also on Facebook, Twitter, and all the other places. Uh, make sure you subscribe on iTunes at tinyurl.com slash gospeltangents. And don't forget to click here to subscribe on YouTube here for a transcript. And over here, we've got some more of our great videos. Thanks again for listening.